Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this podcast, I'm going to talk to you about ducks, raccoons, and rodents. These are all things that can affect your pool and, of course, the quality of the water. And I'll go over some tips how to deal with each of these uh, specifically from ducks all the way down to the rodents that may get into your equipment. This episode of the Pool Guy Podcast Show is brought to you by Jobber. Jobber is your business's command center. The easy-to-use app powers your sales, operations, and customer service all in one place. Go check them out at getjobber.com forward slash im forward slash pool to receive 20% off your first six months. So let me start out with probably one of the biggest problems for your pool, and that would be a couple of ducks that find your pool and they'll visit it daily. You could try scaring, scaring them away. Um, with maybe the sprinklers. I know there's some motion activated sprinklers that they don't they're not really effective long term. If you have a dog, they're pretty immune to the dog chasing him or barking at them and a dog generally can't get at him with the pool in between them and the dog. So the ducks can really make a mess of the pool very quickly. You'll find your pool looking like a pond pretty fast uh, as um, the ducks uh, will excrete in the water rapidly and the excrement will also stain the bottom of the pool surface. This happens a lot with pools. You'll get the staining on the bottom of the pools from their excrement if you don't have an automatic cleaner. Of course all of that goes into the filter and it just really pollutes the water. So ducks finding your pool is bad news. So how do you effectively get rid of them? Now here in California they're protected by the state so you can't kill them obviously and I wouldn't recommend doing that anyway Um, so you can't put anything over the pool that would injure them either so you can't put like a a screen or a net that they would fly into and get hurt that's also a definite no-no in California and you may wonder well how would someone know if I do something like that in my backyard well your neighbors will probably rat you out it's pretty typical Um, they'll be watching and they'll see it Um, so definitely you don't want to do that either to the ducks. So there are some effective ways to get rid of the ducks. I don't recommend putting any kind of chemical in the pool either. I think there are some chemicals that are claimed to be repellents to the ducks and I wouldn't add that to your water because you don't know how it's going to affect the actual water quality if you plan on using your pool yourself. So you could try an inexpensive Intex giant gator float. It's an alligator float and the ducks can be fooled by this float. I found great success with it, putting this in the pool, and the ducks don't like it. Some customers will get fake sharks to put in there also, along with the alligators. I'm not sure how ducks know about what a shark is, but they seem not to like those either. Um, I've heard some people put the giant swan floats in their pool, and ducks don't like the swans. I guess they're um, adversaries of some sort, so they don't like the swans either. Um, But the alligator float is my go-to float. And, you know, it's not really realistic looking. It's just a kid's toy, but it seems to be really effective with the ducks. They won't go into the water with the alligator in the pool. They may walk around the deck and pollute the deck with their waste, but I found good success with keeping the ducks out of the pool with these alligator flo- with the um, Intex alligator float. And they're like $13, $14 on Amazon, so they're really inexpensive. If you find that the ducks that you're dealing with are pretty intelligent and they're not scared away by that particular float, or a swan float. There are more realistic alligator floats. Uh, Poolmaster makes a crocodile that's like a 30 um, inch float and it's a little expensive. It's like $50. So you can find more realistic looking alligator floats online and try those also. Those will scare them away um, pretty easily. But I find that the um, Intex float is usually successful in about 90% of the time. So if the alligator floats fail to keep the ducks out of your pool, then the other option are called, these are called gazing globes or glazing gazing balls. They're stainless steel orbs and typically the larger size works better, so 10 to 12 inches. And you would put these stainless steel pond orbs, they're also called, 
um, or gazing balls into the pool itself. Let them float around the pool. Some have a little hole in it. I like to tape the hole up with some tape that way they don't sink in the water. And then um, you can let these float in the pool. Generally, I would uh, suggest getting four or five of these to put in the pool. You can even put one on, on the deck in a stand. They make the stand for the gazing balls and you can put one in a strategic area where the ducks enter the pool and put the other ones in the pool, let them float around. Um, they're not inexpensive. They're like $30 or $40 each depending on where you get them at. So it's a much more expensive way to get rid of the ducks, but nonetheless, it's very effective. I don't think the ducks like their own reflection, and that's why these are um, really effective in scaring the ducks away. So um, if the floats don't work, which is the less expensive option, then getting a gazing ball or a pond orb um, is the next option for you. And I can almost guarantee you with these orbs floating in the pool or having some strategically on the deck, that the, the uh, ducks will leave pretty quickly. So if you have ducks frequently in your pool, definitely try the alligator float and the um, pond orbs or the mirror um, mirror ball, um, glazing balls, whatever you want to Google. If you just, I think if you just Google um, gazing balls or mirror balls, you'll get the product. It'll come up online. I know that. Be, um, Bed Bath & Beyond used to carry them in their stores. I'm not sure if they do anymore, but you can, of course, get them online um, over Amazon or any other website that sells them. And the floats you can pick up at your local pool store or get them online also. So the next critter that is very uh, messy for your pool is raccoons. Now, raccoons will do a number of things to your pool. They will, for some reason, they like washing their food in the water. Um, so they'll climb into your pool on the step area and they'll, um, you know, defecate in the pool and their poop will contaminate the water, of course, because, you know, it's not healthy or it's a hazard, of course. So you have to do the treatment for that. So it, it does become um, very messy when raccoons will frequent your pool or spa. And there are a couple tricks you can try to get rid of them. And these are very successful tricks. One that I like to do first is to put um, plywood over the step area of the pool or spa. So the raccoons will only go into the pool in the step area, typically. They won't swim into the pool on a normal basis. So the typical way the raccoon will get in the pool is to walk down the steps like you would walk down the step. And they typically just stay on the first step, wash their food, and defecate right there on the first step of your pool and you'll go out there in the morning, you have to scoop it out. And so to prevent that, you just put some plywood over the step area of the pool. It's not very pretty, but it'll keep them out of the pool. So block off the step area with plywood. Um, for your spa also, if you have a detached spa, um, or if you have an attached spa, block the spa steps as well as the pool steps. And I can almost guarantee you at that point, the raccoon won't be able to enter the water and wash their food and defecate in the pool. If you don't really like the look of the wood, you could try using a fake snake right at the step area of the pool. This can be successful in a lot of cases. Sometimes it doesn't work. The raccoon won't see it as uh, a threat, but a lot of times it will work. So you just get a realistic, realistic looking snake and you put it right at the step area of your pool. And if you have a spa, also get one for your spa area. And this seems to do the trick in some cases for the raccoons also, having the fake snake right there at the step area. So try the um, plywood if you can. And then if you don't like to look at the plywood, you can try the fake snake right there at the step area of the pool. Another thing that raccoons like to do, I don't know why they do this either, is they like to chew on your automatic cleaner hoses. So if you have a suction side cleaner in the pool and you notice one day that is sucking air, take a look at the hoses carefully and you'll see sometimes sharp teeth marks in the hoses itself. And the raccoons seem to like to pull them to the side of the pool and chew on the hoses. I'm not sure why they do that. So um, definitely that's another problem that raccoons will cause is chewing your automatic cleaner hoses. So if you do notice some hoses with bite marks, go ahead and take your cleaner out of the pool for the duration of the treatment 
of the raccoons, which is what I mentioned earlier about putting the wood over the steps or a snake there to scare them off the property. Once they leave the property after a week or two, you can put your automatic cleaner back in. Otherwise, they're going to uh, pretty much chew or bite every single hose that you have there and uh, you have to replace all your hoses. So it's also a very common thing that I notice with raccoons that they'll chew on the automatic cleaner hoses in your pool. So try to get rid of them with covering the step area so they can't access the pool. And then if they're chewing on your automatic cleaner hoses, remove the cleaner for the pool for that time period. And pretty much the raccoon will leave and find another watering hole within uh, a couple weeks, typically. And they don't like the fact they can't get into the pool anymore, so they'll just leave your property. So the other critter that causes a lot of problems with your pool are rodents. Mice, rats, gophers, all of these cause a number of problems with your pool. Uh, besides falling in your pool and drowning and contaminating the water, um, which is probably the most typical thing you're going to have with mice, rats, and gophers, a lot of times they'll fall to the bottom. If you have a suction side cleaner, they'll get lodged in the cleaner, and it becomes a very gross and um, unpleasant task of extracting the rodent from your automatic cleaner. If you have a Polaris a cleaner, a lot of times they'll get sucked up into the bag and you may not notice it, so you have to be careful to clean your Polaris. If you have a Polaris 280 or 360, be sure to clean the bag often because there may be a dead rodent inside the bag itself because the opening of the Polaris can easily suck in um, a rat, a mouse, and even a gopher. So one of these rodents falling in your pool is definitely the gross factor with them. And that's why before I swim in my pool, my own personal pool, I always check the skimmer to make sure there's no dead rodent in there. So before my pool, if I'm having a pool party or people over, I'll go out there in the morning and empty the skimmer basket just to make sure there's nothing in there. Because a lot of times they'll go into the skimmer basket, your skimmer will pull them in there and they'll be out of sight and you won't even know there's a dead rodent in your pool um, until you clean out your skimmer basket. So I always make sure I empty that out before I have a pool party just to make sure or I just open the lid up to look in there to make sure there's nothing floating in there. Um, just a little precaution there that I take. I recommend that to you also um, for sure to check that before you have people in your pool. Even though the chances of getting sick from the dead rodent is very slim if you have the proper filtration and you have the proper chemistry level, it's always uh, not worth to take the risk anyway of swimming in a pool where there has been a dead rodent in there unless you've taken the steps to sanitize the pool, uh, which is superchlorinate the pool, bring it up to a shock level of 10 parts per million and running the pool through a full cycle, which is all the water passing through the filter and back out into the pool again. So always check that for a dead rodent. Um, the other aspect of rats um, is that they like to get into the equipment area and they like specifically to get into your heater and so once a rat gets into your heater it'll chew all the wires in there pretty much it'll chew all the insulation in there it'll chew everything it gets its teeth on and pretty much ruin your heater so one way to prevent that is to make sure that um, you have your equipment area sealed off if you have a gate that's a great way to prevent it but they'll still get in there because they can crawl through a lot of areas really small. Around your heater, there's access points for the vents. And simply covering them with a metal mesh or a metal screen is a great way to keep the rats out of there. Um, there are new heaters on the market that are more rat-proof than others. Um, there are brands of heaters that are more rat-resistant than others. I think the Hayward heaters are a little less prone to rat infestation just by the overall design of those. And the Penther heaters are very susceptible to rat infestation because there's a lot of vents and openings in those heaters. So you'll find them living in your heater. Um, you go to use your heater one day and it's not gonna turn on. One of the telltale signs that you have an infestation in your heater is when you remove the front panel, you'll see all the rat droppings in the heater itself. And then you'll know for sure that you have a big problem because the rats have gotten in there and they chew all the wires that are in reach. Um, typically they'll chew the um, temp sensor wire, that's up one of the lower hanging wires in the heater. Um, they'll chew just about any wire that's hanging low. Sometimes they'll even chew the wires outside the heater. So I've had, um, of course, um, flow sensors from the Hayward 
salt system chewed by a rat. You'll have the um, temp sensor for the automated system chewed by a rat. Um, anything that's hanging low in the equipment area, the rat will likely chew it. So that's the problem with rats in your area. Um, you can definitely, you know, put traps out to trap them and hire an exterminator to get rid of them. But one of the ways you can prevent them from getting in the heater is to seal off all access points with um, a metal mesh so that they can't actually crawl into the heater itself. Make sure the front panel is secure on your heater. Um, those are the steps that are, you know, pretty logical to prevent the rats from getting in your heater and ruining your pool heater. And I've seen it many a times on the, my pool route where there's been a heater infested by rats and it pretty much ruins it or ruins a lot of the parts in the heater. And you have to have someone come out and fix that, of course, and prevent the rats from getting back in there. And if you have a spillway or water features in your pool, um, they're very attractive to birds. So you'll have pigeons nesting nearby. Small birds will use your spa spillway if your spa is spilling over into the pool. Very common to have a lot of birds use your pool also. And they'll also um, make a mess of your pool in the spillway areas or if you have any areas where they can land on the coping of the pool. So a good way to get rid of the birds that are using your pool is to um, put one of those fake owls out. Those are really effective in scaring the birds away from your pool and that way your pool stays clean. Um, but generally speaking, um, the birds are going to use the spillway of your pool. They'll just um, use it to drink or take a little quick bath in it, and then they'll fly away. And on occasion, you'll have an infestation of pigeons or other birds, and that's when you need to take the next step and get like a fake owl and put it out there to scare the birds away. But typically, they're not a pest to the pool. You'll see them out there all the time in the summertime using your water. Um, and personally, it's not a major problem, but sometimes I do notice certain pool, certain accounts do get um, infestations of pigeons, and it's really messy when um, they're excreting all over the coping of the pool. So that just about covers the normal problems around your pool. I did have a customer um, that lived in the hills that had a bat infestation in their house, and it's, that's kind of a bizarre and a rare case, but they were living in the chimney area of the house and there was just bat droppings all over the decking near the pool. Uh, it was really messy. They actually had to call a specialist in to trap and remove the bats and take them to a different area. Um, so it was really messy but typically you're only going to have problems with ducks, raccoons, and rodents. Those are going to be the main three things that will mess up your pool and the steps that I highlighted in this podcast will definitely help you eliminate them from using your pool as either um, you know, a mating area, nesting area for the ducks and raccoons as their you know, food washing area, so to speak. And the rodents, you can't do much to keep them out of the pool. They're going to scurry out of the, the ground. Maybe they're being chased by something at night and they'll run right into the pool. And I've saved quite a few of them on my route. When I get there early in the morning, they'll be hanging on to you know, an automatic cleaner hose, and, or they'll be trying to swim in the pool. Sometimes they're hanging on the, the objects in the pool, like a pool float or a toy, and I've rescued several of those um, in the pool. And I usually just dump them out onto the ground and let them scurry away. Um, you know, just call it their lucky day that I was there to get them out of the pool. I've also rescued tons of lizards that go into the pool, and they're hanging onto the to the tile of the pool or you know all these weird areas you'll find lizards hanging on for dear life so I've saved my share of those also but you know I think uh, those are things you have to be aware of if you have a pool if you're thinking about having a pool um, you're gonna run into problems with these critters that get into the pool and so if you're a homeowner looking for more help with your pool care definitely check out my website swimmingforlearning.com I have a lot of helpful web pages and links there and I also have an ebook available for $9.99 that I just recently updated this year. So it has a lot of great content for you to take care of your own pool. And if you're doing pool service uh, for a living and you need more one on one help, I have a coaching program where for $10 a month you can text me, for $20 a month you can call me. And I also offer a lot of great discounts, including 10% off your general liability insurance um, through SPPA and other discounts from manufacturers. So definitely. Um, consider joining that group and it'll definitely enhance your business. 
You can learn more about the coaching program at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week and God bless. Inyopools.com has been helping pool owners find the right pool parts in 2001. With over 50,000 pool parts in stock, order online today and have the parts delivered right to your door. Jobber is your business's command center. The easy-to-use app powers your sales, operations, and customer service all in one place. Check the description below to save 20% off your first six months.